Welcome back to Anderton's TV, everybody. This morning, we're going to be talking about all the amazing things that happened in 1958. What happened, Lee? Tell okay, me. so first and foremost, look at the musical talent that was born in 1958. Michael Jackson, <laughs> Prince, <laughs> Prince, Prince, and Madonna, wow. and Simon Le Bon. I tell you what, Madonna in, looks like she was born in 1911. And um, or maybe Alec 18. Baldwin, hasn't, yeah. he, hasn't he been in trouble recently? Oh yes he has. Um, and for all men of my age, uh, the delightful, gorgeous looking Jamie Lee Curtis was born. Trading really? Places, great film. She's, anyway, she's doing, uh, she's doing, um, she's, other things that happened in 1958. Movies. The microchip was invented by Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments. Uh, London Gatwick Airport opened. The US nuclear submarine Nautilus passed under the ice cap at the North Pole. Lots Nautilus. and lots of things. NASA was formed. Wow. Wow. But I've got to be honest with you, who, who was the, let's see, who was the Prime Minister and the President in 1958? Boris? The, uh, it wasn't Boris. <laughs> it's the still President Boris. It's still of wrong. the United States was Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. What does D stand for? Uh, and in the UK, Harold Macmillan. Uh, and in other countries, other people. Yep. Khrushchev. Wasn't that, do you Khrushchev. remember that? I don't know if I've pronounced his name right. But that wasn't the coolest thing that happened in 1958, no, it was, was it? In it fact, was not. there were two other things that happened that were way cooler than that. Good on you, that. I like it when you it's stand up. It's next to impossible to play a, a flying beer, isn't it? <laughs> but that's why it's got um, this one, isn't it? That's, that's I don't the, know. Does yes. it? Where does that go then? Yeah, like, exactly there. Still difficult. Anyway, so yes, 1958. I mean, has there ever been? Uh, has there ever been in any industry ever a golden era like the 1950s for Gibson guitars? Les Paul, 335, Explorer, Flying V very shortly afterwards, SG, all under the stewardship of Ted McCarty. Yeah. I mean, wow. Uh, of course, back in 1958, the one big difference between these guitars and what we're sort of, you know, mentioning would have been, it said, would have said Gibson here. Gibson, that's uh, it, And of course, it? if you happen to own an original 58 Carina Flying V or Explorer, uh, yes, you are an exceptionally lucky person because they are worth a small fortune these days. Yeah. Uh, what is very cool though, is over the last mm, three or four years, Gibson have been doing these kind of reissue uh, Epiphone guitars. So we started with the 59 Les Paul, and then more recently we've had yeah. the um, 61 uh, SG, where they put this sort of um, satin kind of, I suppose that the concept is to try and make it look like a worn through kind of uh, nitro finish. It's well, so not, what is it? Poly, poly yeah, it's satin. Just, it's, it's just a, a satin, satin poly. very thin poly. It feels kind of beautiful. Finish. Really nice. Uh, real Carina wood for the mm -hmm. bodies mm -hmm. and real Gibson pickups as well. CTS Pops. Two and three. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically, the, it's a top, top, top of the line Epiphone 
a tribute, if you like, to uh, the Explorer and the V. Um, Be quite sorry. tricky to get hold of in um, 2023. I've, I've seen the uh, allocation for Andertons, and they're obviously not making very many of them because they're kind of trickling through in relatively small quantities. Okay, but so it's not it's not limited edition, so hopefully you know, All right, it so will it, catch up at uh, some point. Okay. Uh, before I point this next thing out, please like and subscribe to this channel. We love that if you would, please. Um, I'm going to point this out. Headstocks are the same. Not oh, they, so they haven't gotten the sort no, of look, phone. It doesn't yeah. look like it to me. I mean, we'll, well, you it know looks what? Like so here's a treat for you people in this video. Not only is Pete going to take you through the basic tones oh of these God. two guitars again, we uh, not only are we going to show you the beautiful cases that come with them, but we're going to wheel out of the vault um, a, a modern day uh, Gibson Carina a reissue of the of the V and the Explorer and compare them as well. So stay tuned for all that goodness. Mr. Pete, yeah, please I like that logo there. take us through some, some of tones. The tones. Well, so uh, very Gibson-y, isn't it? With a, with a three-way selector switch. And then we've got here volume and volume, I was just expecting. I right? think it's volume, yeah. volume and a master tone, isn't it? Yeah, but the right way around, or is it the wrong well, way around? That I mean, depends it's, on it's, who you are. It's the, it's the way around that I suppose is most intuitive. So yeah. that volume for this pickup, exactly. this volume for this pickup, and yeah. master tone. You know what, I love this. It looks absolutely amazing with the gold hardware. Uh, it just looks the, the part, man. I love this satin finish, really I good. mean, again, if, if you haven't got a spare 10,000 pounds lying around to buy a reissue, or goodness knows how many zillions of pounds to buy an original one, <laughs> zillions, <laughs> then these are you can clearly buy the way to go. I mean, uh, Elon Musk has <laughs> got lots of these sitting around, but here's the neck pickup. Nice and sort of dark, I think. It's fat. These are really light compared to what I thought they were going to be. Well, no, Karina, Karina always had that. Karina always was a very lightweight. Was it? Yeah, oh, I had a girlfriend once called Karina. Karina doesn't uh, doesn't get used. Uh, the, the company I can think of that uses it most at the moment is Reverend. I think all Reverend guitars are on that's Karina right. bodies. And um, Limbo is called White Limbo. It's the same, isn't it? Is it the same? I think that's I the didn't same. Know that. Black Limbo. Uh, anyway, here's the middle position. But you probably want a bit of drive with that. Well, don't you? we want something probably fat and martially and vintage sounding. I'll just do because that's quite drive with that amp. What's the scale length on these? Uh, Twenty-four and three quarter. So Same like as normal Gibson. Mm. He's got that. It's nice, man. Oh, no, hang on. Tunes like a Gibson, so that's that's <laughs> is it close enough. It's got a nice neck as well. I think that one felt slightly chunkier to me. But, well, I'd um, like. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued to hear, given that it's the same Sounds two great, pickups, man. same wood, same kind of tone circuit. I'm intrigued yeah. to hear whether there's any discernible difference in the tone well, between these two guitars. Well, why don't we try? Guitars. Let's see. Yes. So here's a. I think they sound very similar. They very, should do. very similar. They yeah. should really. This got they? a bit of a sharper uh, back setup tone. I, 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 I guess I wonder if componently like the fact that that one is strung through the body uh, rather than. Oh yeah, maybe there's a little bit there. Um, let's try the again again. Maybe there's a bit more top, slightly top brighter. In I'm, I'm going up there. Mm. 
It is a bit of a thing to sit with, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely brighter this one. It's brighter. Then it can't be the Woodley. Then it's the shape makes a difference. Well, the bridge is, is a different. I, I, think mean, the, I think it's the bridge goes through the wood. We need to do a slightly more controlled experiment of trying yeah. like dozens of V's and Explorers to see if that's just a thing or if it's just a one off to these two guitars. But I really like so, it. So. Anyway, these will be uh, in the shops. Uh, I, I'm not sure how much they're going to be in the rest of the world, but in the UK, uh, I think the list price is about £1,200. Okay. So it's a little bit dearer than, I guess, um, Epiphone have pitched the, the, the 59 Les Paul yeah. or the um, SG yet. But I guess, I mean, you've got to see these cases, right? Let me, let me get you the cases, because they look epic. Holy smokes, man. Yeah. These so, are obviously, these are uh, not ideal if you own like a little smart car or something like that this is a pretty big old case but of course it's a big old guitar and uh what we like is it's the famous kind of brown and pink combination holy smokes um we need the blankets though gibson bring yeah. back the blankets why don't you just um, put the blankets in it probably costs too I'm much not, so. i'm not even sure that the big cases ever had blankets did they yes they did stickers yes, they did. and stuff in here um these are included in the price and are rather lovely i like the new uh, little logo here what have you got there? This logo, oh. this like Epiphone inspired by Gibson custom. Yeah, it's a little bit like, do you remember when Fender did those kind of um, master built inspired Mexican yeah. guitars, like the Baja Telly and stuff? Yeah. It kind of feels a bit like, you know, it's a sort of similar collaboration. Oof. I've got a feeling these might, these might go and be like collector's items. And then, you know, once you get that and maybe they'll, you know, like in 10, 15 years time, everybody's going to want them and then they're you not making right. them anymore. You might be right. Um, okay, cases, goodbye. Okay, so before we have a listen to the Gibson ones, let's just have a little look at the visuals here. Um, the, the most, well, I guess the, the most obvious thing from a feel perspective is, is the Gibson is the, is the gloss sort of um, shiny sure, yeah. uh, feel, whereas the Epiphone's been done to sort of have a slightly more aged, worn in kind of vibe. Um, Headstock's the same. Headstock is the same. Obviously the dimensions and everything will be the, the same. same. Where the strap buttons are is the same look at that even the cover the here is the same color knobs on mine are the same and the knobs on yours are the same yeah i mean my, the knobs on the on the gibson are slightly aged like they've got the sort of the, the whiting the whiting the writing has gone a bit yellowy yeah um i mean it's a pretty good repro right got rosewood fingerboards on the gibsons we've got laurel fingerboards on the epiphones i think it's really really the really tuners are nailed on really aren't they yeah. um i must admit the the bevels uh bezels sorry the the jeff bezels yeah, on the say, uh, jeff bezels. on the gibson are sunk all the way into the body whereas on the epiphone they're Just sort of surface sort of sunk oh, right, whatever that's that interesting. means um I mean, they they are different pickups, aren't they? I think are the well, actually, do you know what? I, I I would need to go and refer. I would imagine on something like these, they'll be custom, custom boxes. Yeah, yeah, these are burst boxes. A little custom. bit, little bit chunkier. Sometimes I wonder if this it is even the just same, the man. lacquer that makes this feel. No, these two feel exactly the same. Yeah, I think the shoulders on the Gibson feel just a smidgen. I mean. The wow. trouble is, half my brain is concentrating on trying not to let the guitar slip away. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whereas uh, normally I need my entire brain focused on the actual notes that I'm playing. And that um, is just one note at a time here, people. You can't do more than one note at a time. Let's just have a quick time. listen. Do they sound radically different? They are quite a lot lighter, the Epiphones, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> It's got the same bitey kind of tone. I, 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 I'm, I have to admit that 
so much of it is psychosomatic. Like I know that that's a lot more expensive than this, so I, my brain wants to hear a fatter kind of a sound. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not, if there is something in it, it's marginal, right? I mean, on this one here, when I was just having a quick uh, noodle, I felt like this definitely is, is brighter. <laughs> This, this place is so I like good. Wow. I like how on the V, the Gibson logo is like a stuck on, I'm guessing it's made of plastic, but you know, like a, a, a sort of a, it's not an inlaid logo. So they've done the same on the Epiphone. Yeah, it's completely and then on the, no on the Explorer, it's obviously an inlaid logo and they've done the same on the, on yeah, the Epiphone. Gold on that one, no one's silver on this one. That's a, that's a miss, isn't it? Um, but so here's the same kind of. There's definitely more sound in that one. I don't know if the pickups are close or whatever, There's but a, it's a more figured grain, isn't it, on the Gibsons? I don't yeah. know where. Again, I'm sure there are um, different ways of harvesting Carina and different ways of cutting it and stuff. But I know certainly on Gibson stuff, it's it's always. Uh, the, the wood on Gibson guitars is, you, you might hear this phrase, quarter sawn. And it's sawn in a way that uh, is not the most efficient way of using the wood, but it gives the nicest looking grain. So I would imagine if you're trying to make a, a more affordable guitar, perhaps you'll, you'll saw it in a more uh, economic way. Yeah. Um, Let's just try this here, this guy. <laughs> It's magnificent, man. Oh, it, oh, I know it's fucking, yeah. what is it, eight grand or something like that? Yeah, I mean, they make me laugh. As, this makes me laugh as well. Look look how um, they've tried to fit the serial number at the top of the uh, the Flying V headstock, and it's got so many digits in the serial number I can't read that it, it sort of barely, that, that barely works, fits. Where, where's the serial where's the, number the on the same. Gibson? They do it that way. Oh, it's the so same, that's why but just a lot it, yeah. more digits in it. But Yeah. Oh, man, I, you know, these, yes. are, these are for the money, I think you can't get much closer than that. It's, and I, it's, I, I think it, they will be... Uh, I kind of agree with you. And I, I tell you the other thing that I know that happens with this kind of um, sort of satin finish is it, is it does start to go shiny the more kind shiny. of, you know, your, your, the, your sweat and armrest kind of does this a lot on the guitar. So yeah. they will look cool in a, in a year or two's time as well. Or they'll look more look cool, cool now. That's it what I mean, wicked. just as in more cool. You just take your little, just take that off and, you, you know, who would know? Everybody needs a, a V or an Explorer, doesn't that I mean? Especially if you're a live guitar player, you know, who wants yeah. to be that guy that's just, you know, unless the you play, sheep unless following... Unless you play Umpa music, then might, maybe not. Is it a I bad guitar, is it, for Umpa music? I don't know. I don't know. I've never been in an Umpa band. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's do a slightly extended jam out where we literally yeah. go through the four in the same well thing. all over it. Cloud burst all over it. Yeah, uh, links will be below to where you can pick up one of these guitars. Like I said earlier in the video, um, Apologies if uh, you have to get in a queue to get one, but they're, they're, they're not making uh, that many of these this year. Um, but they're yeah, great guitars. I love them. They're Thank great, you very man. much for joining us uh, today on this fine and dandy Monday. Sunday of the week. Is it a Monday? It's a Monday here today, Monday, isn't it? Yeah. Who knows what day this goes out. Actually, no, this is going out tomorrow, isn't it? So this will be going out on a Tuesday. Uh, but have a great day, and we shall see you in another video soon. Thank you very much. Au revoir.